Isoteric science is known as the absolutely no-chill branch of spirituality, where the truths are dispersed in an almost intentionally brass manner so as to awaken the soul while provoking the ego's fragility. What is certain is, it is not for the faint of heart. It has its strengths and weaknesses, such as being deeply connected to both universal principles and the mystery, while oftentimes lacking the emotional intelligence that's required to actually embody the knowledge that is so revered. Today I'm going to be covering the nature of an awakening soul, in contrast with the nature of a sleeping soul, to gain some clarity as to why the world seems to be headed in such vastly different directions. To do this, we have to understand that although all of humanity shares collective lessons and archetypal themes, there is a fundamental difference in our nature. We may have already heard this now popular esoteric truth from Leonardo da Vinci, but the three natures I'm referring to are essentially broken down into those who see, those who see when shown, and those who do not see. The Gnostics refer to these three soul groupings as the nomadics, the psychics, and the hylics. Mystery schools refer to these three circles as the esoteric, the mesoteric, and the exoteric. Hermetic philosophy has referred to them as the animal, the semi-wise, and mind. Still other sources refer to them as the mechanical, the cosmic character, and the individuated. And even more savage, they've been referred to as the walking dead and the living. So, this is a core concept in mysticism of having these group consciousness, or what I'm referring to as these three worlds. And it's not meant to invoke a sense of superiority. This is just a part of the soul's journey. The soul is in different stages of development. We don't all come here into a lifetime with the same lesson plan or even the same desire for Gnosis. And both Western and Eastern mystics understood this. In truth, at the highest level of being, there is only one soul exploring and interacting with itself. But we don't jump to the highest level of being for truths because it doesn't help us navigate our level of reality, where there is differentiation. And also because, well, that's cherry picking. So we have those who make up the grouping da Vinci called those who see. Well, what's to see? What's being seen? This is the group of people who very easily see through the entire matrix we are in. It doesn't take much, if anything, because it's more of a remembrance that's being activated. They can also handle knowing the nature of reality, both the bad and the good, despite how unnerving it may be. Their soul didn't come into this life with many veils on. There's a complete openness to the metaphysical in general. Now, the souls who fall under the category, those who see when shown, they have the spotlight on them. They are what this earth show is all about because they are the ones who have evolutionary potential. But that potential can also not be actualized. So they require the most catalysts. They are definitely open to the metaphysical and the spiritual, even if they aren't super open right away. They can dig it, they just need more proof, more connecting of the dots, and that's really not asking a lot. At a soul level, what's actually happening is they're going through an individuation process where they are leaving one realm, where they had less responsibility, less free will, and a shared collective fate. And they're entering a new realm where they are stepping into higher consciousness and the metaphysical dimensions of reality. So those who see when shown need a strong support system for this to happen, or they may just hold back and wait until they do have one. It's even possible for them to go back to sleep or live a double life where they keep their contemplations and otherworldly impulses to themselves, so it really comes down to support for them. The last world, those that do not see, are the ones who do not have the capacity for higher consciousness. They will not be able to see even if you drag them into the light, so not even Ace of Base can help them. They are not individuated consciousness, so they need a shepherd and rely on being told what to do. They share a collective fate, not an individual one. They are not satisfied by any amount of proof toward the metaphysical, even if they pretend to be. They claim to be academic, but true academic can think and sense for themselves. And with this type of pseudo-academic, there's merely an imitation. They will fight for their sleep state of consciousness because that is the state of being they themselves vibrate at. And could you really blame them? The most beneficial lessons for their soul's development 
are actually in the sleep state of consciousness. That's where their curriculum is, so it makes sense. Despite how frustrating it may be, each world is growing through interacting with the other worlds. There is not one world that does not learn and grow from engaging with the other. There is no charity in the universe. If you are assisting, you too are benefiting and learning from it. What the individual needs to monitor, however, is the draining of life force that takes place through the clashing of these worlds. The chasm between these phases of consciousness is a major cause for fighting, passive aggressive behavior and bitterness between people who are not merely in differing belief systems or differing backgrounds, they're in a whole different reality. So inevitably, everything is going to be turned into a giant game of telephone where what is being conveyed is distorted or simply not understood. The amount of energy it takes to extend one's energy field into a realm can take its toll. And even if you do force feed those that do not see, your truth on a text thread or a family dinner, they're not going to thank you for it and finally come to their senses. They're going to resent you and double down on their beliefs because that's how ego consciousness operates when the soul is in a nascent form. That may sound harsh, but only if we think everyone needs to be at the same level of being as everyone else and that no one can be less or more evolved than another, which is entirely unrealistic. Some moments we're placed in situations not to raise another's consciousness, but to raise our own through the acknowledgement that everyone's on a different journey. In fact, many lightworkers knew going into this life that they were focused on assisting those who see wind shown. And many of us ourselves have been those who see wind shown. It's this middle world that has the potential to heed the call towards higher states of consciousness. But the yearning for all beings to use their free will to make the choices that we would make with ours actually comes from a very pure heart space. We can't stand to see suffering. We're not intentionally trying to bypass the fact that all beings will make choices that will lead them either further away or closer to consciousness. We're simply trying to relieve the enormous amount of pain that unconsciousness inevitably creates in the world. But when we project our own level of consciousness onto the world and then wait patiently for them to awaken to it, we are innocently experiencing the shadow side of oneness. There is a realm more important than oneness when it comes to being able to truly discern the course of spiritual evolution that's taking place. And that is clarity. Clarity tells us that no matter how much we wish to bestow what is right and good for us onto what is right and good for others, or have the galaxy do it for us, even though we knew it could only be done by ourselves, which is why we reincarnated in the first place, that ultimately we can't control the lessons, the development, and the free will of the entire world. Not everyone is gonna make the same choices at a soul level to awaken. More importantly, not everyone desires higher consciousness, even though we may think that they do, or if we think that it would be good for them. This pains even me to say. When we don't have this clarity, we will settle for spiritual prophecy that insists it is a global awakening. Just like how Christianity insists there is a rapture and how every religion insists that their terms are the objective terms. Prophecy can only be relied on when it doesn't get in the way of discernment. We are absolutely experiencing a global awakening because we're on that timeline. But not everyone is going to make the choices that place them on that timeline because not everyone has the same vibrational curriculum. This is just about soul resonance, otherwise known as curriculum. So even though there is absolutely a domino effect building up into a complete dimensional shift right now, as well as a mass spiritual awakening, that is still not going to be the journey for every single soul on earth. Nor is that what every single soul on earth even desires. So it only sounds sad to those who think everyone needs to be on their level. This deep discernment frees the individual of projecting their experience and their belief systems onto the world, thus making them closer to becoming true love, a love born of discernment, the absolute and unconditional love that the universe is generated from. The kind that says, you can do that, but I wouldn't. I hope this has brought some clarity to your journey. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for more higher dimensional guidance through spiritual awakenings. Thank you and see you next time.